Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. And in this segment of our program, we are going to talk about the regional uh, conference on achieving sustainable development in Middle East and North Africa. And this conference is organized by the Economic Organization for the Suez uh, Canal, uh, uh, for the Suez Canal Economic Zone. And now uh, we are joined by Mr. Haini Abul Futuh, he's an economic expert, uh, who will tell us more about this conference. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure having you with us. Can you tell us a little bit more about the importance of investing? in infrastructure projects? Uh, the development of infrastructure projects is very important for any country. It impacts the economic uh, growth mm. and uh, helps in achieving competitiveness. Uh, without uh, proper and efficient uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, there will be no, inv no progress in the in achieving the sustainable go uh, goals for development. And uh, talking about the uh, mega projects and national projects and, and infrastructure, they include a wide range mm. of uh, projects, including water supply, power plant, uh, uh, telecommunications, uh, building uh, efficient airports and seaports, uh, logistic uh, areas. These are very important for achieving the sustainable goals and uh, uh, invite uh, investors, for local investors and foreign investors to invest in the country. Also during uh, this uh, conference, uh, Minister of Planning Dr. Helal Saeed, also she uh, stressed on the importance of uh, uh, investments in infrastructure projects uh, and is considered a priority for the government as it aims to achieve sustainable development. So uh, talking about this, uh, how do you think uh, infrastructure project is essential for development of the economy? Uh, infrastructure projects are very essential and important mm. for uh, uh, for the sustainable development and for the national economy. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, it will uh, uh, create jobs in the public and private mm. sectors. All business activities will benefit from uh, these uh, infrastructure uh, projects and uh, more jobs will be created and this will impact directly the unemployment rate which is, stands now at 9.2% uh, uh, as opposed to 11% uh, last year. Yes. As an economic expert, sir, um, how do you think that developing the Suez Canal access in particular um, can open up investment projects um, in various domains? Uh, the Suez Canal uh, uh, economic uh, access is critical for the coming area and for uh, for the coming for the period uh, to until the uh, year 2030 and important for achieving the sustainable goals it's it consi it is considered as a huge incentive uh, for the uh, investors whether local or foreign investors uh, there are several mega projects actually uh, uh, are running in this area including uh, six tunnels under the Suez Canal, including the, the world's largest uh, container uh, platform and uh, building uh, new cities, uh, six new ports. All these are very important in creating communities, in creating uh, advanced areas, uh, economic areas. And the, the government actually has taken a very good step in the legislative reforms where the presidential decree uh, uh, number 113 for year 2015 uh, designated the Suez Canal economic area as a special zone, economic zone, and uh, in this way it is free now of any bureaucratic uh, procedure which might hinder the investment in this area. So, sir, uh, how do you think uh, it is of importance to have economic partnerships in the region amongst the private sector governments and the civil society? Uh, the public-private partnership mm -hmm. law, in fact, was, uh, was introduced several years back and the cabinet in last December approved uh, an amendment, mm. a legislative amendment to this law in order to streamline the law and make it easier for the private sector mm. to uh, invest uh, in the uh, infrastructure projects. Uh, by way of example, uh, the proposed amendments 
uh, introduced uh, a new feature in the, in the law where a uh, single uh, supplier contract is now possible. Uh, the private sector can propose to the government uh, mega projects. It mm. allows the government for more subcontracting. So all these are very important and I would say that there is a finance gap in any, globally in any uh, PPP, in any infrastructure uh, development uh, projects and this gap uh, in Egypt as, as far as I uh, recall uh, is estimated at 100 uh, billion pounds so without injecting money from uh, private sector the development uh, of the infrastructure would be hindered and the uh, achieving the uh, sustainable economic goals would be largely uh, hindered as well. Whenever we talk about infrastructure or projects in general, we always like to um, take a look or reflect on how this will have an impact on the average Egyptian citizen. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, um, the average citizen certainly will benefit from many of these mega projects. By way of example, in the past few years, uh, we had a chronic problem in the uh, electricity supply. Uh, the new power generation uh, mm. projects which were uh, established in the last couple of years almost eliminated this problem. Right. Uh, similarly, the National Roads, pro the National, uh, Roads Project, uh, which is actually a very huge investment uh, uh, by the government in, in a mega project, it created uh, highways, bridges, and uh, roads, which makes uh, the average person uh, uh, enjoys the savings of time in the travel, travel mm. distance and actually also saving the fuel cost for uh, instead of incurring more expenses in fuel for longer distances. The telecommunications, for example, is now more efficient than a few years back, uh, which make the e-trade e and make the personal use, individual use of the internet and applications of, uh, more efficient and more affordable uh, to the, an average person. There are other I mean, examples, but I mean for the, due to the constraint of time, I will not elaborate more. Mm. So, sir, do you think that uh, legal amendments uh, would encourage the private sector to be uh, more active in implementing uh, the major infrastructure projects definitely and as i mentioned earlier that the cabinet uh, approved in last yes. december uh, the amendment to the ppp uh, law uh, because uh, the uh, the present law actually hinders the private sector from uh, investing more money uh, into the ppp framework under the ppp framework so uh, this uh, proposed amendment, I'm sure, that uh, will tackle all the bureaucratic but, yes. uh, hardship. And I think that the private sector in Egypt is excelling in this field, in the field of infrastructure, uh, making uh, roads and bridges. And uh, the private sector itself is uh, uh, making projects in many African countries in Egypt. So many private, uh, private uh, companies, I mean. So we should make use of this here in Egypt. Yes. Indeed, yes, and the partnership, uh, yes. uh, whether, whether uh, I mean, uh, mm. the investment, whether it's taken by whole, uh, fully by the private sector or under the umbrella of PPP is something that yes. the government is encouraging. Mm. Yes. Is, w the, um, this particular conference was looking at Egypt's uh, participation or, if you will, uh, integration and coordination with North Africa. How important is uh, cooperating with North African countries? Uh, since the Egypt has taken the presidency of the, uh, the African Union mm. uh, early this year, uh, Egypt plays a very important role in the continent and not particularly uh, limited to North Africa. Mm. Uh, Egypt has always been a leader uh, in, in Africa and it has maintained very strong relationship with most African countries particularly in the North African region. We have very strong and well-established relationship with all countries in the North African region and uh, 
I expect that uh, by time uh, this, uh, uh, this tie and relationship would be more strong. So, sir, talking about inflation, and uh, we can see that it has uh, declined in the past month uh, to reach 14% in the first half of 2019 in comparison to 30% in the same period in 2018. Ha can you elaborate on this? In fact, it was more than 30%. It yes. reached to 35%, if okay. my memory serves me mm. right. Indeed, it's attributed to mm. the exercise of the monetary, some tools of the monetary policy by the Central Bank of Egypt and also to the economic uh, reform program. Uh, Central Bank of Egypt, uh, on a monthly ba uh, basis, convene uh, uh, in order to determine uh, the uh, overnight uh, lending and uh, deposit rate, which is a benchmark for the banking sector uh, interest rates. Uh, this important tool, this important tool helped uh, to curb the inflation. And similarly, the Central Bank of Egypt used another tool, which is the legal reserve ratio, which is uh, the amount of cash held by banks as deposits, interest-free deposits with the central bank and by this way limiting the bank's ability to lend money and causing more inflation. Right. So uh, in order to uh, summarize this issue, mm. it's due to the uh, central bank efforts in using the tools mandated by the monetary policy and as well as the economic reform uh, programs which had mandated several measures which helped inflations to be under more control. And with all the um, projects and all the economic activity as well as the economic reform program, do you expect to see an even a larger decrease in inflation during 2019? Uh, not a larger actually increase in, 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 in inflation, but there are some uh, factors which are beyond the control. Mm. Um, which are mainly attributed to uh, the oil prices, for, for example, right. and uh, some uh, instances happening in the emerging markets. So as far as I believe, the inflation rate, the Central Bank of Egypt targets a single digit inflation rate by the end of 2020. I see the progress if everything goes well uh, without a sur surprises. Central B uh, Bank of Egypt will achieve uh, the objectives in keeping the, mm. uh, int uh, in the uh, inflation rate uh, at a single digit. Uh, of course, uh, there would be also expectations for three very ver uh, uh, an acceptable variance of 3% up or down right. of that uh, target rate. So, sir, if we uh, talk about unemployment also, uh, we can see that uh, there's a progress uh, as it declined to reach 9.9% in comparison to 13.2% in 2013-2014. So, uh, uh, how do you see this? Uh, I would consider that uh, the mega projects, the, mm. in the, uh, the national city, projects yeah. which were established in the uh, last uh, three years, have contributed significantly in creating more jobs. Mm -hmm. So uh, these jobs actually, if, if, uh, without the uh, national uh, projects and the mega projects, uh, the unemployment rate would have uh, remained uh, at a high point. Mm. So the main factor is due to the mega projects and national projects which were established in the last few years. Do you think the SMEs, the encouragement of small and medium sized enterprises that may have also contributed to the decrease in unemployment rates? It is, ex it is expected, right. but I don't think it has uh, a significant, uh, played a significant role. Right. The, the government, uh, particularly the Central Bank of Egypt, ha has extended uh, an initi initiative to boost financing uh, uh, of the SME sector and uh, allocated 200 billion Egyptian pounds uh, for lending the SME sector at a lower interest rate. But yet, uh, it is not yet materializing. Right. It is progressing well, but not yet uh, materializing or achieving the objectives in uh, 
reducing uh, or contributing directly to in, uh, decreasing the uh, employment unemployment rate. Also, according uh, to Moody's International uh, Credit Ratings, Egypt's economic growth is flourishing and uh, as a result of uh, the government's economic reform program. So can you give us uh, your insight on this rating of Egypt's uh, economic performance? Uh, Moody's recent report actually provided a positive outlook yes. to the Egyptian economy and particularly to the uh, banking sector. That was the recent report which was issued uh, last week. Uh, uh, this report, in fact, uh, uh, stated mm. that this positive outlook is attributed to the mm. strong economic uh, growth rate which Egypt achieving yes. uh, 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 year over year. Mm. Uh, for example, the, uh, the growth rate was 5.3% mm. uh, in, in year 2018 as opposed to 4.3% in year uh, 2000. Uh, 16. Yes. Similarly, the domestic investment uh, level reached uh, 721 billion uh, mm -hmm. pounds as opposed in year 2000 and the fiscal year 2017-18 as opposed to uh, 392 in year 2015, the fiscal year 15-16. Uh, yes. So uh, all these positive uh, uh, ratios and uh, improvements pushed Moody's to change its rating uh, and outlook of the Egyptian economy. When Moody's, when an organization such as Moody's um, decides to give Egypt a better rating, how does that inf affect investors and how they view Egypt as a country? It affects I, uh, the the confidence of right. the foreign and local invest, uh, investors mm. because Egypt as like any other economy uh, when it issues uh, sovereign bonds and uh, the the investors would look at uh, the rating agencies how would they perceive the stability of the economy according to a standard uh, criteria or, or methodology for uh, uh, the rate, uh, which is adopted by the rating agencies. Mm. So the more stable uh, the economy and more positive outlook, the more incentive for the investors to uh, inject money into that economy. And sir, how do you see the government strategy to double exports in the coming period? Uh, doubling the exports uh, uh, or uh, giving incentives yes. to the exports has always been yes. a major issue for the govern for mm. the governments over over the years, and the governments in fact uh, provide facilities to exporters Sporters. and open windows for marketing, assist them technically yes. and financially uh, in in boosting their exports to mm. uh, to, uh, to other markets which uh, have demands to the Egyptian products and services. When we s look at the Egyptian economy as a whole and as an economic expert, um, what areas do you think we could work on more to improve the e overall economic status? Uh, we have done a lot in the past few years, uh, uh, in, in certain areas like legislative reforms. Right. I still perceive that more has to be done. Mm. More has to be done to modernize the government agencies. Right. Bureaucracy, unfortunately, the reality is bureaucracy still prevail. Mm. We need to kill pro uh, bureaucracy, right. not only for the investors, but also for the average citizen in order to feel that uh, we are in a modern uh, society and uh, the procedures, uh, whether it, it is economic, it is uh, civilian or whatever, is streamlined. Mm -hmm. uh, per, uh, another issue also I would consider important is uh, more encouragement and empowerment to the private sector. Right. Because the private sector is, is leading the economy and you should be more empowered uh, this also agrees with the statement or the press release uh, of the IMF uh, executive director which uh, called on Egypt to 
more empowerment for the private sector. So, sir, what are uh, the fields uh, that attract investors at this stage? Uh, local or uh, uh, here in Egypt uh, yes. local investors yeah. uh, I would consider that uh, tourism yes, uh, is important mm. uh, investors which had trouble in the yes. past due to several reasons yes. which actually negatively mm. impacted investors this segment of the economy mm. need to be boosted Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, the, the proceeds of tourism is not uh, yeah. less than 11 to 13 percent of the GDP. Yes. So it is a huge source of foreign currency and a source for creating jobs. Mm -hmm. Egypt has one third of uh, the uh, world's uh, antiquities. So we have a wealth of antiquities. We have uh, uh, shores, we have beaches, we have uh, uh, very attractive touristic areas. All this must be properly mm. utilized. Countries which don't, which don't have such uh, wealth or treasures of uh, touristic area destinations uh, in Egypt right. uh, receive billions of dollars every year, mm. like Spain, like France. We are better. I, th I think we have more treasures mm. yes. than these countries and we should actually uh, divert, uh, focus the attention and efforts to, to raise. And how do you think that can be done? Uh, in government incentives. All right. Okay, for the, for the, uh, for the sector. Uh, attending uh, or selling Egypt as a better touristic area around the world in the exhibitions. Mm. There are nearly 39 world ex exhibition, touristic exhibitions every year, and Egypt must be very well presented in these exhibitions. I think also that investing in the new administrative city is uh, important now, and also in the field of real estate. So how do you Real estate, that? I have some concerns about yes. real estate. Mm. Okay, real estate uh, reached uh, a, a very dangerous, uh, oh, I wouldn't say danger, yes. but I mean a saturation area. Mm. Okay, the prices are uh, hiking while the demand yes. is shrinking. Mm. So, this is something I mean of a concern, right? Okay, and as rightfully said, the projects in the, uh, the uh, or investment in the, in the new city is not particularly yes. the new administ uh, administrative, administrative city, is something which I see is f should be flourishing and has a very good perspective. Hmm. Well, my colleague Shireen had asked you about um, investing or where should um, private investors in Egypt invest, but what about? the um, foreign markets, where do you think they're looking to invest in Egypt? Uh, Egypt uh, has a unique uh, destination or position in, 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 uh, in the world and particularly we always say that uh, Egypt is the gate of Africa and Africa's gate to the world. Yes. So uh, we provide, Egypt here can provide logistics uh, uh, I mean, as uh, services in, in, in the Suez Canal, uh, particularly in the Suez Canal economic zone, and uh, we can uh, facilitate the trade to the African countries and part uh, similarly to, to the Middle East. Right. We have very good potential for attracting uh, uh, investors uh, to uh, invest in uh, other industries in, e in Egypt. Uh, we have the cheap labor, uh, mm -hmm. we have uh, the logistic areas, good roads, uh, seaports, yes. efficient transit uh, system. All these could produce or generate money uh, for, for the country. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Haini, our photography economic expert. Thank you so for being with us today. Pleasure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a quick break and then we'll be back. Stay tuned.